Welcome back to Introduction to Engineering Design. This is Module 7.1, and we're working a little bit with dimensioning. So to get started, uh, first of all, what I've done is we've uploaded all of the part files uh, onto the Canvas module. So go ahead and look at your Canvas module, and up in that module, you'll find your part files for 7.1, question 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 8. So the part files are all there, so the first thing you should do is download those and save those to your download folder. You'll have to open them individually as we work along. So I've got part number one open, and this comes straight from your uh, activity directions here. Uh, and this actually says create a multi-view CAD drawing for the following part that you modeled. And what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, the three views, front, top, right view, along with an isometric view. So let's get started doing that. So we learned a couple different ways to do this uh, prior when we were making our cubes. So let's just do a quick refresher. I'm going to go ahead and create, I've got the part open, and I'm going to go ahead and create a drawing from the part. It's going to bring me up to this uh, to this uh, view, probably here, where you're in the novice view. Go ahead and click on Drawing, and OK. At that point, we need to go ahead and pick up where we are have our template stored, and I've installed the template on everybody's C drive, and that is under ID41, ID Templates, landscape. Go ahead and open that. What that will do is give you this framework and what it has in it. Uh, it has a little bit of artwork, has the drawing name, which is the file name. It'll later save the path down here, the date, and the person who's logged on as they're making the drawing. So prior to this, the way that we added uh, drawing sheets is we, we basically did it by doing a view layout and looking in the model view and looking over here. We're not going to do that in this instance. What we're going to use is we're going to come over to the right hand side and you can click on the view palette. So this is a little bit more useful uh, in the view palette and if you're trying to work with a file that you have open uh, you can come over here and pick it if it didn't pick already but we started from the open file so it picked it already. But the usefulness of this is I can now see my view layouts as they would appear as I dropped them onto my screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this front view. I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm just going to drag it out on and drop it. Once I drop it I now can automatically project views. There's a top view, a right view, and an isometric view. When I'm happy with those, I will go ahead and click the check mark or click hit the escape key. And we'll just leave all of these as depicted line drawings. Now the first exercise, what they ask you to do is they ask you to use aligned dimensioning. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and use datum dimensioning. So we're not, this is not to be confused with an ordinate dimensioning. It's a datum dimensioning. And we're going to choose the left hand lower side here for all of our dimensioning on this first model. So what I'll do is click on Smart Dimension, click on the first line to be dimensioned, the second line to be dimensioned, and now I didn't really show you this, but you'll see this little yellow and blue orb that uh, highlights in places of dimension. That's because I have Rapid Dimensioning selected over here. Rapid Dimensioning right there. So I'm going to use that Rapid Dimensioning and I'll hit the escape key here so we can start back over. So I'm going to click on my first line, then my second line, and I'll click on the yellow dot. That will place my dimensions. Now you'll see, you'll see that this is an aligned dimension horizontally right now. And all the horizontals will align. So I'll do my second dimension, which will be from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And again, choose my yellow orb on the top. And it places my dimensions appropriately also places the leaders correctly. So let's do the same thing for the elevation. Start from the bottom line to this first step. Choose that. And now you'll see that my dimensions are unidirectional. So I'll show you how to change that. I'll do the second one here. Drop those two dimensions in. So if I want to change a dimension, what I do is click on it, and I can come over here and I can alter the look of my dimensions and several other things over here. I can change units, I can change the way that the leader works, uh, but what I really want to do is go leader and custom text positions. And Down here I can choose the aligned text right here. Uh, and I'm going to do a broken leader aligned text. 
And you'll see it flips my text, and I can do the same thing here. Custom text, broken leader, aligned text. So there I have an aligned text from the datum, the bottom, and left-hand side. So I'll continue to dimension. Go ahead and continue to dimension this. Uh, again, I've got all of my width attributes, except I don't have this width attribute. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension that one width attribute. And then my elevation uh, or my depth attributes, I'll go ahead and dimension those. In this instance, it makes more sense to dimension on both sides. So I'll start by going from the bottom to my first little ridge. to my second ridge, and here I will go to the cut. And you'll notice I'm using the yellow button, and I'm always referencing from the same base line point. There are my dimensions. Now again, if I want to make these aligned, I have to go in and I have to edit this. I could change this as a default, but I recommend you don't do that. So we're going to go ahead and use that aligned text position and I'm just clicking my way through this. Probably the last time we'll do this. There's my aligned text positions. Now you can look at this and say, well, what have I not dimensioned? Uh, I've actually dimensioned most things, and as I look at this, it, I, it strikes me that I've got some odd dimensions off to the side, which would be better displayed down here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And I'll put those dimensions down below here as width attributes. And now my drawing appears to be fully dimensioned. That's the first exercise. So that is a datum dimensioning using the datum of the left-hand side and the bottom here, left-hand side and the lower edge, mm -hmm. left-hand side for the remaining dimensions. Thanks for watching.